welcome to my kitchen. This is Cooking Today. Hi, welcome to Cooking Today. I'm glad you're here. It's getting to feel like fall outside. Doesn't it get you so excited to see like pumpkins here and there? I mean, it's just a teeny bit early for that, but I sure love it. I would put pumpkins out in like July because fall's my favorite. And my favorite thing right now is football on the TV. I mean, I, oh, you know how some people have white noise at their house? Mine is football. I love it. I watch it. I love to have it on. I just, there's something cozy about my house when football's on television. And one of our all-time favorite things when we're watching football and it's starting to really get kind of that good transition between late summer and early fall is to make these baked potatoes. This is one of my favorites that we make at night. We have them on weekends, on Saturdays when we've got football on all weekend. And I mean, when I say we watch football all weekend, I mean, we watch football all weekend. If there's a game on, we have it on. Are y'all that way? I know some of you are because we've talked about it on our social media, the crazies. This is just one of those great fall meals. And you know, it's a baked potato. These spicy Creole baked potatoes with this really great shrimp. Got some bacon and some cheese and some good sour cream on the top. Pretty classic. However, we really spice up this shrimp. We top it with good smoky bacon and they're salty and a little bit creamy with the sour cream on there that we're gonna season up a little bit. And I think of fall when I make these probably because it just kind of is our memories. These feel like the days that we watch football in our house. They just do. You know how you have food association with memories? This is just one that I always seem to break out in the fall. However, baked potatoes are always in season. My goodness, you can get them year round. You could eat these any time of year, really. So they are not just for fall, but today we're making them to celebrate it getting a little bit cooler and football season is upon us. Okay, so this is kind of good game day food if you ask me. Here is how we are gonna prep our potatoes. There are about a thousand ideas on how to make potatoes. Some people wrap them in foil, I've done that, and some people do not, so I think there are two schools of thought. I like for my crust on the outside, my skin, to get a little bit crispy and then the inside is like nice and tender and good. And so we are gonna do ours today on a baking sheet rather than wrapped in foil. If you're wanting a more tender skin, then you would wanna wrap them in foil because they kind of steam on themselves and so the skin stays nice and you know kind of soft and pliable. I love like a steakhouse potato that has like a crusty, salty skin. I eat this skin. Once I dig all the stuff out and I get down to it, sometimes I'll just get a fork and knife and go to it and eat that skin really, really good. And you know, there's always nutrients in the skins. Always, always. So if you can leave them on and give them an eat, then do it. So I have four big baking potatoes and I have gone through them with a fork and poked holes in it because you do want a little tiny bit of steam to get inside. And I have my oven preset to 375. Here's the beauty of a baked potato. If you have company coming quicker, you know, sooner than later, and you need to put these on or you just have a shorter window that you need to cook, then up the temperature and cook them for a little bit of a shorter time. So you can put them up at like 400 or 425 and cook them a little shorter. If you need to kill a little time and stretch it, you could put these in at 350 and let them cook a little longer. So really it's up to you. Today we're doing 375 and these will cook for about an hour or so. And I'll check them, you know how I feel about this, I check them at about 45 minutes or so and I, you can do one of two things. You can take a fork and just kind of see if you can kind of poke down in without a whole lot of give. Or, I think my mom did it this way, so it's how I do it. I put an oven mitt on and just give them a little squeeze. And if you can feel, you know what that feels like 
where it's kind of firm and then you can kind of feel it give like you've mashed it a little on the inside, then you know that they're ready. So your baking time is really conducive to just kind of about however much time that you need to make them. Okay, so for potatoes, poked with holes, rubbed with oil, and a really heavy, do you see? Really heavy salt crust on the outside, and the oven is set to 375. So I'm gonna stick these in. Mm -mm -mm, they smell so good. Okay, piece of cake. So we've put those in, and you know, here's another thing too. I, and people who know me know this about me. I am not a big crock pot user or a slow cooker user. I always use my oven or my, you know, my big Dutch oven. I feel sure that there is a way to make potatoes in a crock pot. You could probably wrap them in foil and then do a cook on them all day long. Like, so if you were at work or teaching school or doing whatever you're doing, you could absolutely cook those in a slow cooker. I mean, just give it plenty of time. When we come back, we are going to start on our really great toppings and they are really great. This is Cooking Today. Cooking Today, sponsored by West Rock Coffee Company. Hi, welcome back, glad you're here. Today, I am making spicy Creole shrimp baked potatoes. Doesn't that all just sound so good? Spicy, we love. Creole, you know, I have a blackening seasoning that I always make from scratch that we have, you know, in our recipe. Um, shrimp, I love shrimp. You know, on my very first episode here, we made shrimp and grits. And I know that y'all have made it because I've talked to you. It's, it's so good. Listen to me. If y'all have not made those good shrimp and grits from episode number one, you need to go and dig around and find that recipe and make it, especially now that it's starting to settle into fall. Again, I could eat shrimp and grits year round because it's just delicious, but y'all, mm, when it's starting to get crisp and you just want a bowl of something really good and comforting, that, that's what you need to make. Delish. Okay, so spicy Creole shrimp baked potatoes. I have got our potatoes in the oven. We rubbed them with oil, gave them a really good thick salt crust so that when they bake, they get nice and crispy and cooked down and really, really good on the inside and tender. And I've got some bacon. And all I do on this, you can do one of two things. If you love to cook bacon in the big strips and then crumble it after it's cooked, then you can do that. I always, if I know that I'm gonna do a, just a, you know, a little crumble of bacon on the top, like in a salad or on these potatoes. I prefer to cut it first and then just saute it in my skillet. It's just really, really easy to do that way. So I have got my brazier on with just a little bit of oil in the bottom, kind of help aid my crisp. And then I've separated those little pieces. This is just a couple of pieces of bacon. You know, in my book, you can never have too much bacon. So you can do as many or as few pieces of this as you would like. I've probably done four. And I did a good thick cut bacon. Okay, I'm gonna just let that saute. And check on it every once in a while. Mm. And then waiting in the wings, you know, I always have these paper towel lined trays. I have a million of these. We sell them at Unimaze. These little guys, I don't even know how people cook without them or prep without them but I've got one waiting for me when our bacon gets done and I can drain it. Okay, onto our shrimp. What I have here is frozen shrimp. And I just get it in the bag, usually with the tail on and um, not peeled. And I don't know why it is that I just really love it, but I love to just go ahead and peel my shrimp myself. I think a lot of times there's a little bit more flavor and I just really like the tactile of it. I like just kind of getting my hands in there and doing it. So these began tail on and, you know, with the peel on and I just went ahead and thawed shrimp under running water. This is a really great tip on frozen shrimp. Run them under cold water in your colander and then after I peeled them, I laid them all out on this sheet tray like this and then put them well, and then patted them a little bit first with a paper towel. Because a lot of times when you run shrimp under 
water to thaw it, it just kind of loses its texture and sometimes it gets just a little bit soft. It can get kind of mushy. I don't know. It just, you know what I mean? It just kind of gets like wet and yuck. So tap it out with some paper towel and then put it back in the refrigerator and let it just cool. And a lot of times what it does, and these are not, these are all laid out in just a single line. They are not piled up in a bowl. We wanted them to get air so that they can cool off, dry out, and then they actually kind of firm back up instead of just going straight from wet shrimp to, you know, cooking it. So we let it do that. Then another thing that's really important for you to know about doing this is once our bacon is done, which we're going to give it a little stir, once our bacon is done, we're going to reserve some of the bacon fat that's in the bottom of that skillet because there is so much flavor. It's smoky and it's salty, just really, really good. And we are going to saute our shrimp in the bacon grease. If you were not to allow these shrimp to dry out and you just went straight from rinsing them to putting them in that grease, it will spit like crazy because when water hits grease or oil, it, it spits and we do not want that because it makes a really bad spray and it is hot, it's grease. So this dried out shrimp actually keeps that from happening. Isn't that a great tip? Some, I, you know, we've talked about this before. Frozen shrimp is king around here. It is always handy, always available year round. It is light, it cooks in no time flat. It can be buttery. It can be lemony, and today we're making it Cajun-y. Mm, so good. Okay, all I'm doing is coating a little bit of these shrimp in our blackening seasoning. And when we come back, we will saute, saute these up in that really good, 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 good reserved bacon grease and prep our other toppings. I can smell our potatoes. This is cooking today. Ice Tea, sponsored by Lipton. Experience the local sounds, sights, and taste of the Fayetteville Farmer's Market. Do you know the producer behind your food? What about how far away your food was grown? Local to us means your food is harvested hours before traveling less than 60 miles to our market. Enjoy music, chef demos, and special events while you shop for locally grown produce, meats, cheeses, flowers, artisan crafts, fine art, and more. Visit us Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday on the Square. The Fayetteville Farmer's Market, 100% local and loved. Hi, welcome back. It smells so good in here. We are making spicy Creole shrimp baked potatoes. Doesn't that sound so good and nice and comforting? We have baked potatoes in the oven baking for about 45 minutes to an hour at 375. Good salty crust on the outside. We have cooked some bacon pieces down until they are nice and brown and crispy. Isn't that good? I'm going to leave that out. Let's leave that out for our shrimp. And I have my paper towel lined tray and all I'm going to do is, you know, strain these out and let these dry off and as they cool they get nice and crispy. So we're going to take those on out. And then we have seasoned our shrimp with Creole seasoning. If you don't want to make your own, then you can certainly buy store-bought Creole seasoning. I love to use Tony Satchery's or whatever is your favorite blackening seasoning and just load it on, okay? So, we have our bacon pieces. Oh, I mean, like at Una Mae's house, you know, she's my granny that I named my store after. She always had a candy bowl that has some of our favorite things in it. At my house, I would probably just have out a bowl of bacon. Wouldn't that be awesome? Don't you think people would be knocking down my door to come over and eat my candy bowl full of bacon? Mm, smells delicious, okay. So we're gonna let our bacon pieces crisp. We've let our shrimp thaw, air dry, and kind of firm back up in the refrigerator. And then I have taken my Creole seasoning and just given a really nice little shake over one side. And then I am reserving the liquid from the bacon, that good fat where all that flavor is, and those little bits on the bottom. I'm leaving that in the skillet, and I'm just gonna spoon these right off. Now, what's very important to know these are going to cook in no time. 
I think I got, I don't know, 31 to 40 per pound, I'm thinking. Yeah, that's probably about right, 31 to 40 um, per pound. And they're smallish because we don't want to have huge shrimp on top of our potatoes. We kind of want to get them kind of packed in there so you have several, you know, several on there. Um, but because of that, they're very, very small, so they're going to cook very quickly. You don't want to overcook your shrimp, especially on this heat, because they really can. Um, they kind of start out nice and like a loose U shape. And you want to cook shrimp until they become like a C. If you cook them until they become an O, like they close completely up, then you've probably overcooked them a little bit. And so just kind of be watching for their shape and cook them until they look like a C. How about that? Doesn't that make that easy? Okay, we're going in. Oh my goodness. Already just the smell of that Creole seasoning and that salty savory of that bacon grease. Oh my stars. Doesn't this feel like tailgate food or game day food? Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going in gray. I'm going to kind of lay them down as much as I can, kind of in a single layer. Best I can do. Yep. And we're going to give those just a minute on that side. And then I'll get my, um, you know, my little turner and we'll kind of give them a good flip over just to be sure that they kind of get a little color on both sides. And then we'll just give them a good stir for good measure just to be sure. They're only going to take, I don't know, two, two minutes aside, I'm going to guess. In the meantime, let's chop a few green onions for our top. Oh my goodness, these are so pretty, y'all. All we're going to do is bake our potatoes, melt some butter down on the inside when we kind of pull them open, then do some cheese way down deep in there, shrimp, and then Stick them back in the oven and let that shrimp bake down just a little bit more and the cheese down under, bake down and inside. Then we're going to pull them out and put bacon and more cheese and our Creole um, sour cream in there. I mean, layers, like all the way down. Let me tell you, one time, the first time I made these, I got really lofty and thought that I would go ahead and just dig out the whole inside of my potato and do more of like a twice baked potato thing. That is an awful lot of work, if you ask me. Getting those potatoes, being really careful and digging out the middle, tossing the ingredient, you know, the insides with, you know, seasoning and sour cream and all that. I just decided to just do it this way. It is a whole lot easier on you, for sure. But if you're feeling lofty and you want to make twice baked, and pull those insides out and stir them up with some butter and sour cream and cheese and all that. Okay, look, we're getting close. They're so close, I'm actually going to just turn that off. We're going to shred our cheese just a little bit to go down on the inside and on the top. Mm. And then we're going to check our potatoes. Everything in this kitchen smells good. You can smell the bacon. I can smell those green onions. We've got spicy shrimp going. And the potatoes, you know the smell, that good earthy smell of a baked potato with salted, salted crust. Good, good, good things are happening here today. When we come back, we're going to layer these up and load them up. Easy as that. This is cooking today. Candy, sponsored by Mars. Welcome back. We are just wrapping up spicy Creole shrimp baked potatoes. So many good flavors in here. The smell is fantastic. It is comfort food. We got our baked potatoes out that were rolled and crusted in salt. Cut them, pressed the edges together where we just popped open and they got all tender and so steamy good. On the inside, down deep, we went ahead and put some butter down deep. Put a little bit of cheese just kind of underneath and then loaded it up with that good spicy shrimp. Look how pretty that is. Nice and packed on there. And now for the good stuff. Cheese. I like to use a sharp cheddar. Load it on. Load it on. Load it on. 
Isn't this game day food, y'all? Ugh, delicious. My mouth's watering, no kidding. And then we're gonna mix a little Creole seasoning right into our sour cream, just about a teaspoon or so, just to flavor that sour cream just a little bit. Delish, delish, delish. Ready for this? Dollop of Creole sour cream on all of them. Oh my goodness. And that creamy balances out all that salty, salty, really the heat from that Creole shrimp. And then a little bacon. Look at these, y'all. And chopped green onions. Unbelievable, beautiful fall food. I hope you'll try this at home. You are gonna want to, trust me on that. And love every bite. This is Cooking Today. Cooking Today, sponsored by West Rock Coffee Company. Kitchenware is provided by Una Mays. Groceries provided by Harps, Hometown Fresh. Online Elements, sponsored by Fayetteville Farmer's Market.